all dream. We dream of our next career move, the next big technology, our passion, meaning. As an engineer in training for over five years now, I have found myself dreaming of solutions to many complex problems. But for the most part, dreaming rarely helped because after a shift in my perspective, I found that I had the answers I always needed. So what does a perspective shift look like? Think back to the last time you were outside eating your lunch and the wind started to blow all your napkins away. I bet that most of you jumped for the nearest bag of chips or any other weighted object available, be it a Bluetooth speaker, cell phone, beer bottle, to help weigh down the pile. None of these objects were made to be a paperweight. But what you have done, in essence, is use an object based on its ability to solve a problem, not based on what problems it was defined to solve. If I were to give you that same bag of chips in a sterile white research room and ask you to list all the possible use cases, napkin holder would likely never make the cut. <laughs> but what's going on here is usually not intentional. Rather, this stems from a cognitive bias known as functional fixedness. According to psychologists, this is the human tendency to use an object based on its traditional definitions rather than its innate ability to solve a problem. But I am not a psychologist, and I'm not here today to tell you about our collective biases or how to maintain better control of your picnic. <laughs> rather, I am an engineer, and in my short tenure with this title, I have come across this time and again before even knowing that it had a name. No example portrays that better than my time with Gatorloop. Gatorloop is the University of Florida's Hyperloop pod competition team. This competition was created by Elon Musk, a man known widely for his companies SpaceX and Tesla, to help develop the Hyperloop technology. While we have vastly optimized our transportation systems in use today, there have been very few new ways to transport large amounts of people and cargo over large distances. The status quo is planes, trains, ships, and automobiles. Until Hyperloop, of course. In theory, Hyperloop would be a system of tubes that form loops between major destinations such as Los Angeles to San Francisco. The tubes would have most of the air pumped out of them, resulting in an environment similar to that of space, allowing for much faster travel times. Putting this in perspective, the travel time from Los Angeles to San Francisco currently takes about six hours by car, but could be completed in about 30 minutes by Hyperloop. This technology has the opportunity and potential to revolutionize transportation as we have come to know it. To put all of this together would require many systems that are extremely complex mainly because one of the largest hurdles to making this a reality is that most man-made vehicles that have traveled at the speeds proposed by Musk do so high above the ground. But Hyperloop would be a ground-based vehicle, bringing with it many unique challenges, such as friction and unknown track dynamics. This technology has a lot of potentials, but in particular, Dealing with these ground and vehicle interactions is one of the most contested. The systems that handle this are known as levitation systems. As it stands, there are two mainstream levitation solutions. Solution one is to use air bearings. In short, this technology works much like common air hockey tables by pumping large amounts of air underneath an object, allowing it to float above the ground. Gathering the large amounts of air necessary to make this work require systems that are anything but simple, especially given the low-pressure tube environment, with solutions often ranging from high-pressure tanks to jet engine components. Solution two is to use magnetic levitation. This technology takes advantage of the natural tendency for light poles of two magnetic fields to repel each other. Most of us have played with the little red and blue bar magnets before, and know that when you put the same color or pole on one magnet, Next to the same color or pole on another magnet, they push each other apart, again allowing the vehicle to float above the ground, much like it did when using air bearings, only without the requirement for high-pressured air. However, this system does require the use of high-powered computers and magnets. The advantages of both of these technologies 
are that the vehicle will never physically be in contact with the ground. However, both come at high cost and require extensive engineering know-how. So much so that if Gatorloop was to use either of these solutions in our design, we would have never been able to compete. We were a startup team in a startup competition for a startup technology, meaning access to large amounts of funds was extremely difficult to come by. To those of us closer to the project, the name Gatorloop aptly became replaced with the more fitting budget loop. <laughs> in addition, we were a team of mostly undergraduate engineers who had barely finished introductory physics classes. So the idea of developing a magnetic levitation system or air bearings from scratch was completely out of the question. These unique constraints forced Gatorloop to use tools and solutions that were right in front of us. The flip side is that these same constraints allowed our team to see solutions in ways that other teams just could not. So while everyone was busy trying to reinvent the wheel, we decided to use it. Gatorloop's solution was not much different than the common metal wheel and rubber tire combination in use on almost all modern vehicles, just like those on your car out in the parking lot. However, the tires on your car could never reach the theoretical speeds of 300 miles per hour for the competition. Even tires on street motorcycles are only rated up to around 150 miles per hour. In our design, we decided to wrap metal wheels used by drag racing teams with rubber tires used by land speed racing teams. This combination gave our vehicle a top speed more than double that of the average road car. In short, we were able to not only reach the competition speeds, but we did so resourcefully, cheaply, and simply. Full disclosure, current wheel technology cannot meet the highest theoretical speeds proposed by Musk, mainly as a result of the additional heat and stress due to friction. But this does not mean that it can't be a viable part of the Hyperloop development process. After all, there are many pieces to the larger complexity of Hyperloop that have to be put together. For example, there's other areas such as passenger comfort and passenger safety that still need development. So while wheels may not be the solution in use by Hyperloop in 20 years, they can certainly help speed up the rate to market for the technology today. But the question I was left asking is why didn't other teams use wheels, or even Elon Musk? a man famed for his ability to put the screws to old technologies and systems to help them produce more. Before being allowed to physically build a vehicle, SpaceX held a design competition in Texas. Walking into the design showroom, I had an immediate answer to my question. Wheels just are not sexy. They have been in use for thousands of years making it almost embarrassing to stand in front of our simple presentation board presenting the use of good old wheels as the solution to the future of transportation as we know it. <laughs> wheels had become defined by their place on common and present technologies. So seeing them as a solution for a technology as advanced as Hyperloop just wasn't a natural conclusion. But Gatorloop was different. We had a unique circumstance that forced us to use the tools that were right in front of us. So while we were able to not only see wheels as a great solution for the competition, we also recognized their powerful potential in the larger picture of Hyperloop. Our team made it to the next round that weekend in Texas. And one year later, we built a complete vehicle. It made it to Hawthorne, California, SpaceX's headquarters, where we were able to demonstrate that all systems were fully functioning. Today, Gatorloop continues to shape how I view and approach all problems in my life. Whether I find myself searching for solutions to specific design problems or dreaming of a better version of my current self, I take a pause. The vehicle my team and I built should have never left the computer modeling space. And yet, it did. All because we shifted our perspectives and recognized 
that we always had the answers we needed. As we look forward to our collective and individual futures, be that with our careers, technology, or even personal relationships, we will undoubtedly face many challenges. And as we move onward in our lives and in society, we must be willing to challenge our perspectives, to be transfixed in the rigidity of functional fixedness could mean to miss a brilliant solution to an everyday problem. This mindfulness starts with each of us, every day. As we move forward in our careers, home, and work, and school. So, keep on dreaming. Dream of the next big thing. But as you work to reach those dreams, be willing to consider alternatives. Gladly embrace constraints and be willing to understand the power of both of these things as a gateway to resourceful and creative solutions. Thank you.